Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Supply and Demand Analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Press that like button right now um, if you like the content that I provide every week and the weekly analysis. So let's get into uh, the week ahead and uh, zooming in straight away. So the uh, the US and UK are releasing key inflation reports next week with investors looking forward to see if um, the recent price pressures show any signs of abating amid the economic growth slowdown. So that's quite important. The reason why is because um, there is this theme that the global uh, economic um, economy is, is slowing down uh, slightly. And um, if inflation can show signs of abating then um, the central banks won't necessarily have to ha or have that much pressure on them to hike rates. The last thing a central bank wants to do with a currency is hike rates in the midst of um, an economic, potential economic slowdown, right? Because that's what's known as stagflation. And um, and so uh, stagflation is a really difficult uh, situation for central banks to be in. So they need economic growth, right, in order to um, uh, really, uh, I guess, take make the decision to kind of high rates. They have to do it anyway if, if um, you know, inflation is above and persistently above and consistently above their 2% target. But it makes it more difficult in the midst of um, a potential uh, global economic uh, slowdown. Other than that, important data to follow include retail sales and industrial production figures from the US and China and employment reports from the UK and Australia. That's going to be, again, um, employment uh, reports are, uh, I guess, a leading indicator of uh, the economy, right? So if you have high unemployment or low employment, then you're heading into, you know, uh, I guess um, an economic slowdown. If you have low unemployment or high employment, of course, um, then your um, economy is growing, right? So or it's a great sign that your economy is growing. So um, that's going to be important for the UK and Australia. The Eurozone and Japan will be releasing foreign trade data. That's always important as well. While New Zealand publishes second quarter GDP growth, which I think is, uh, I'm in a New Zealand long trade, been in a long trade for a couple of weeks, and that is going really well. So as long as the data supports the narrative, there's no reason for me to actually exit that trade. Plus the RBNZ, which is the uh, New Zealand um, central bank, um, are saying that they're going to be hiking rates, right? Which is the reason why you're seeing um, the uh, New Zealand dollar really kind of outperform. Anyways, uh, let's get into a bit more detail on the uh, on the charts and uh, going on the dollar index, right? So let's look at the dollar index. And I think actually before we get uh, really kind of get into the nitty gritty on the do on the dollar index, it's really important to understand um uh central bank forecasts i guess from ing and other other banks and ing are, are a dutch bank and they've uh, pretty much put together this uh, this timeline really good timeline and what this uh, explains really is and why this is really important is because it outlines what they think um uh, central banks are going to do with regards to rate hikes or potential rate cuts and also QE balance sheet changes. Now, why is that important? Because um, currencies uh, appreciate and depreciate based off of monetary policy, for example, rate hikes and whether uh, an increase or a decrease or a tapering in, um, in quantitative easing. And as you can see from 2021, into 2022 and these are their forecasts it's not set in absolute stone because things can change of course the data has to support this narrative but if you know the the, the forecasts do come in um correct or at least close to being correct then you can uh kind of uh price in the central banks and, and the market can price in what they think the valuation of one currency versus another is so i'll give you i'll give you an example right so a lot of traders will trade, for example, the euro dollar, right? So let's look at the European Central Bank, and they're expected to reduce um, PEPP, uh, uh, but APP boosted basically from their um, <clears throat> quantitative easing perspective. There's a little tiny bit of tapering, and we'll get into this um, uh, uh, a bit later when we look at the euro. Uh, 
But when you look at, for example, um, the Federal Reserve, if you look at the fact that by the uh, third quarter, the expectation is for a potential rate hike, right? You've got the arrow there pointing upwards. By the third quarter of 2022, this is what is potentially happening. They were on the hiking cycle uh, first and the European Central Bank are lagging. So what should happen logically over the medium to long term, not necessarily the short term. This is where traders trip themselves up about fundamentals not working. They, they work just fine. It's that you just don't know how fundamentals actually work and the perspective that central banks and uh, investors have. They have a medium to long term view, not necessarily the, the most shortest term view usually is that ultimately the Federal Reserve are looking to appreciate their currency first, rate hikes, yeah, and the European Central Bank are not doing anything to appreciate their currency. So what, you know, the question is, is what way should you really be trading, right, in the medium to long term and looking for pullbacks? Which way should the trend be going if this does play out, of course? It should be, you know, you should be shorting the European, um, the euro and buying the Federal Reserve. Now, that's not to say that every single week, um, you know, the, um, the 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 euro dollar is going to go down, right? That doesn't it doesn't work like that. There has to be pullbacks, and these pullbacks can can last for weeks, right? But the point being is that we've seen this happen. Um, from earlier in the year and this has really been the theme and this is the reason why you've seen that downtrend in the euro dollar so just extrapolate that out into you know um uh into other central banks who's first who's lost and then have a medium to long-term view on what you you know which way you should be trading and as long as the data supports the narrative that's really the way that you you know um that we trade uh, right, and that's where, and that's how we capture the, uh, the 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 larger trends. It has nothing to do with um, Elliott waves or um, any kind of technical analysis. This is the reason why currencies appreciate and depreciate. This is the fundamental analysis that you need to uh, to to take notice of. But let's get back into the uh, dollar and actually now noticing that and uh, taking note of that. Now uh, you're understanding probably why um, this week you're seeing. Uh, a bit of a bounce off of this uh, this demand zone, this hidden demand zone this week to the upside. Um, and again, just getting into maybe a bit more detail is that the Fed are seen on track for 2021 taper start even as COVID-19 swells. So policymakers watching data ahead of the 20 uh, of the September 21st, 22nd meeting and taper unlikely this month, but Fed may give a November signal. So. Um, although we had disappointing jobs data last week, and I think a lot of traders ended up going short on the dollar, um, it, it, um, although it delayed tapering, there is still on track, they are still on track for a tapering bias, hence the reason why you're seeing prices potentially go to the upside um where you saw prices go to the upside this week. And it doesn't mean that prices can't go, you know, back down and and eventually sorry, um end up going to the upside eventually, but and that's, again, if they taper, it's kind of like buying the rumor, selling the fact. But overall, you know, the bias for the dollar, um, um, although it's a bit more neutral for me, probably more to the upside than to the downside. But again, the data needs to support the narrative. The, the, the better the data, so if employment comes out, retail sales come out, um, uh, you know, unemployment data comes out and um, the central bank is still uh, talking about tapering in November, Hopefully, you should see the overall uh, trend, you know, continue to, you know, the upside. Of course, there will be pullbacks within that, but overall, pullbacks should be looked at as buying uh, opportunities. So let's see uh, what happens with with uh, with the uh, with the dollar, and again with the dollar index. This is just a measure of dollar strength overall uh, against uh, the major currencies so if you look for if you see prices really kind of come down to a demand zone on the dollar index it's just looking for uh, dollar buys i guess as confluence um, on other dollar crosses so overall you're still seeing some dollar strength as long as the data um, supports the narrative of um of a of a buy trade uh, and of, of tapering which should uh, appreciate the currency moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen again um 
uh, been really in this range between this high and this low as far as uh, supply and demand. Again, I think any real, you know, any major pullbacks, I think are probably buying opportunities. I think if prices can come down a really kind of deeper pullback, uh, my bias would be to the uh, to the upside. Although if prices do come up into a, a area of supply that level has been touched several times but i think uh just above this uh 11062 area uh would be actually a decent short but you'd have to really kind of see risk off come into the market risk off is when there is uh, a flight to safe haven um um uh, protection if there are uh, is a lot of fear uncertainty uh in the market and um and prices come up then money tends to flow into safe haven assets. The dollar actually is considered a safe haven asset, but I think the, uh, the Japanese yen should want to um, should want to strengthen it as it is one of the main safe haven assets. But overall, my bias is to the long side. So probably just looking for, you know, pullbacks um, on uh, on this currency pair. Uh, dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss this week, uh, you've seen basically, you know, the, the dollar kind of push up, break through that demand zone, which had been kind of touched uh, several times, uh, came up into this area and sold off a little bit. I am looking at um, getting into this trade, but waiting for a deeper pullback. I really want something around this 91 round number area for me to get uh, long or if prices really do prove uh, proof of value, which actually would be somewhere around here. One second. Uh, there and there so prices have made a new high so yeah so if prices do pretty much come back down into this zone that's probably the first area to look for um potential buy trades but i do think the ultimate you know buy for me anyway is uh, somewhere around somewhere around this 91 area those of you who are in a private members discord group will recognize that as uh, a stop hunt zone or if prices can come down to this uh 90 uh cent area here 90 cent and a half zone around here uh, the swiss franc for me um is no way even near a buy again unless there is some risk off sentiment um until that really happens and even then i probably wouldn't buy the swiss franc um i'd probably just wait for risk off to push prices to where i want to be a buyer and then look for a buying opportunity um but if you do want to get short that that was the opportunity i think uh, probably just a bit higher than that if you want to get short again uh, would be the best or the better zone uh, moving on to the dollar cad <clears throat> dollar cad has been again a bit in a range a um, bit choppy i do think that uh, let's have a look there is a bit of supply not necessarily the best supply in the world but um there is some supply in and around here um and if we've got bit more demand as well drag that slightly up um, it's not really a pair that I'm I'm interested in um, I think the uh, both central banks are pretty much on a uh, tapering and hiking cycle over the next uh, you know six to twelve months so um, for me not there's no necessarily there's no edge there when trading you know fundamental analysis you're looking for divergences you know or convergences but divergences meaning one is hiking and one is at least you know holding rates or, or cutting right that's really the divergence you're looking for and if both central banks are you know hiking rates then there really is no divergence there so for me it's not really um a currency pair that i'm i'm, I'm looking at but if you are then you're looking at probably a, a, a deeper pullback into this area this uh 124 zone or looking at the highs i think that this area here is a really nice area to look for a short technically but you'd have to believe that the canadian dollar is an absolute bargain at these prices against the us dollar and vice versa if you're buying um, in demand you'd have to really believe fundamentally that the us dollar is an absolute bargain against the canadian dollar moving on to the new zealand dollar us dollar <clears throat> and uh, as i was speaking about earlier the um, the RBNZ are actually uh, looking to high crates and um, that's pretty much why you're seeing this you know massive move right and um, there should be you know probably some sort of pullback but pullbacks I think uh, should be looked at as buying opportunities so uh, at the moment from a, from a demand zone perspective really you have to wait for a kind of a pullback to get long or if prices do make higher highs and pull back into this you know demand zone which would be here 
that would be really the uh, the play uh, to look for if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar over the US dollar. Now, if GDP comes out um, this week on the uh, New Zealand dollar and it comes out, you know, it's really poor, then um, actually, in fact, this would be a really nice uh, sell trade opportunity to take advantage of some potential uh, selling on the uh, on the New Zealand dollar because if GDP doesn't support um, a a rate hike, for example, which is what the central bank want to do, then um, the market has to reprice and revalue the um, um, the New Zealand dollar, right? So if it comes out as poor um, or, or or really disappointing, then in fact, if you are in this trade, probably maybe look to take some sort of profit, um, and also potentially if you're not in this trade, you may want to take advantage of you know some some short term selling on the New Zealand dollar. Moving on to the pound, um, the pound again, um, and the US dollar fundamentally, I think, are um, again in, in the same place when it comes to looking to high crates, right? They look both looking to high crates and taper soon, although the British pound is seen as being ahead of the US dollar. So ultimately, if they're ahead, then prices should want to drift, you know, higher. I'm not saying it's going to be this week, of course. No one knows short term price, but overall, if um, in in the medium to long term, you should have an overall longer term trend, uh, because if, like I said, the British pound are hiking rates sooner than the Federal Reserve, then that's really the path that prices should want to go in. But uh, also looking at the pound uh, this week, there was some disappointing news. The US, the, sorry, the UK economy, uh, the UK economy's coronavirus rebound grinds to a halt in July. So GDP rose just 0.1% as services manufacturing stagnate and more troubles ahead with ending of support programs and tax rises. So the UK economy barely grew in July, sorry, suggesting the recovery from the coronavirus recession is rapidly leveling off and consumer spending weakens and supply disruptions hamper production. So it wasn't great news. And this was due to, um, I guess we had a bit of a, what was known as a pandemic, um, where um, the NHS, the, natural, the National Health Service app was um, alerting um, us as to um, uh, if we were, potentially in contact with someone who had coronavirus and if we were pinged then we would have to uh, self-isolate but what was happening was is that even whether you had corona uh, or, or not um, the fact that you had to self-isolate um, caused a lot of disruption um, to the UK economy so uh, I think this may just be a blip who knows um, but uh, for now, short term wise, if we're looking at short term price, you might start to see the, the pound start to sell off. But again, if the data supports the narrative as far as, you know, GDP comes out um, in the next quarter as being really good, then this could be a decent buying opportunity um, in and around these zones. And I think probably this one, three, five area would be a really bargain price for the uh, for the pound. So if you want to take advantage of maybe some short term sentiment, now would be a decent time to look for a shorting opportunity if you're looking to trade this pair. Um, but to me, I think this pair really isn't on my list at all of uh, 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 pairs to trade. There are much easier uh, pairs to trade, meaning that there are pairs with bigger divergences rather than looking at um, uh, uh, monetary policy that is really kind of heading in the same direction. Um, moving on to the Euro dollar. And the euro dollar. So um, this week uh, we've seen a bit of a sell off. And in fact, uh, I did make a video uh, this week regarding um, how to trade the news and really why uh, buying uh, or selling the dollar and buying the euro around this area here. Because this was a jobs miss, right? There was a massive jobs miss last week, Friday. And so I made a video. Um, uh, for the private members, but also posted it publicly for YouTube as to why um, if you're looking to, you know, buy the euro and sell the dollar, which means you would have been buying at highs, why that was a terrible, terrible idea, right? And um, I'll kind of break it down in that video. And uh, if you, uh, if you, um, you know, watch that video, you'll understand how exactly this played out and we also we saw basically uh, people getting stopped out, right? Liquidity hunting, etc. That's not to say the prices can't go higher, but, um, you know, it, it was a it was a 
really a bad idea anyway to to, to kind of buy um, the euro and sell at at at, uh, at lows or, or buy the euro at highs even based off of that uh, because the market really um, doesn't move on um, or the market moves mainly on fundamentals yes but in the short term it's more to do with liquidity and the avoidance of slippage so if you watch that video you know you'll see basically you know the plan and how pretty much it played out anyways euro this week did have their uh, the ecb did have their uh, their announcement and the, the the title is the lady isn't tapering but ask again in december so there's been a lot of hand wringing over the guard statement and what it means for the future of the ecb bond buying program but bigger test but a bigger test is looming so pretty much um lagarde was very vague in her um, assessment of whether the Euro European Central Bank were looking at tapering and what type of tapering and then what that would look like. And again, tapering is an appreciation of the currency. So um, the market was pretty much left scratching their heads, but um, I'll just read this first paragraph. The European Central Bank has made a very small down payment on prolonged economic recovery, uh, one durable enough to withstand COVID-19's troubling variants. Uh, but the big decision making uh, comes in December when the central bank undertakes a comprehensive review of its, of its bond buying program with a few more months of delta under its belt and better and a better sense of direction about the Federal Reserve's withdrawal of stimulus. There will be less room to fudge the messaging. So they're pretty much just holding and, and wait, having a wait and see approach. But um, I think they're going to be forced, obviously, in December to really kind of come out and give the market clarity. So um, how does that look, obviously, in the market? And you're, you're just pretty, pretty much seeing, you know, an, a non-event, right? So, it, you know, the, the, the news came out on Thursday. There was a bit of spiking up and down, up and down, but nothing really, right? So the market is interpreting what the uh, what Christine Lagarde said and uh, didn't see any real, you know, um, meaningful uh uh, means or uh, or uh, um, a decision to really kind of buy or sell in either way, but um, I do think in the short term, I do think in the short term potentially there is room for prices to you know go to the upside, uh, and you'd have to really kind of wait for prices to come down into that demand zone, the one seventeen area, which seems to be a bit of a line in the sand for uh, investment banks um, uh, for a, a potential buy trade. If you are looking to buy the euro, um, if you are looking to continue to sell the dollar, then I would really wait for prices again to come up to this 119 area. In fact, probably the one uh, just above that, that that supply zone before looking at getting um, short. <clears throat> so euro, euro dollar, mixed messages, um, not, not the greatest to be fair, but I think the, sorry, the path of least resistance should still be to uh, the downside overall maybe in the short term you might see a bit of a pickup but I think overall if you're looking at where you know who's ahead and who's not this could just be a basically a little bit of a pullback and then before prices go to the downside um, moving on to the euro yen um, again euro came up into this supply zone technically um, not really a pair that I'm interested in to be fair uh, not that interested in um, any more uh, but there are there is a supply zone right there so if you want to get short meaning that you're buying the Japanese yen uh, again waiting for risk off sentiment to really come into the market I think the, the higher level around this one three one area is probably the best area to look for any kind of short trades uh, my bias if, if I had to pick one would be actually probably more of a long trade and that would be really nice that area there I do actually like this uh, 128 technically as a, uh, a nice buy for the euro <clears throat> but um, ultimately um, uh, this pair isn't necessarily the greatest pair if I'm looking to you know uh, uh, buy um, or sell against the Japanese yen there's there's much better pairs or stronger pairs to look to um, um, to look to buy or sell the uh, Japanese yen against right so but technically I do like this uh, this area here and this demand zone and this supply zone is, is actually quite decent as well but not necessarily a great pair fundamentally at the moment Aussie dollar and the Australian dollar um, had a nice little run up I do think the Australian dollar is um, potentially undervalued but I think the uh, the data needs to support the narrative I think 
this area here is actually a decent area to look for any kind of buy trades ultimately if prices do come down here i think that is going to be a really really nice buy there's definitely strong demand around here so whatever push prices um <clears throat> higher this was obviously seen as an absolute bargain for the um uh for the australian dollar so if prices come back down here again then that's where you want to really look for potential buy trades if obviously the data supports the narrative of course um but the australian dollar are lagging behind the us dollar in terms of the um, um you know central bank monetary policies so if anything i think the path for least resistance is to for now anyway to the downside but if the australian dollar start to really kind of pick up i do think that um, these are nice buying opportunities so if you do want to get short it's really looking for but gets a pull back into that zone there or that zone there before looking at getting um short um on the Auss aussie dollar aussie yen again um i think i will be uh, looking at buy trades in and around these areas um I think similar, very similar to the Aussie uh, dollar, but I think the Japanese yen is a much better pair uh, to trade the Australian dollar uh, with. So um, the Japanese yen are pretty much lost when it comes to you know trying to strengthen their currency. So any pullbacks I think into these areas are going to be nice. You also have the confluence, uh, some confluences of horizontal support and resistance as well. So that's really, uh, really, really nice in and around that area. If it, if prices can get down there, because nobody really knows what price will do. But if prices do come down here, um, then I think uh, nice buying opportunities for a potential long trade and um, short term wise as far as supply wise I think yeah that level's probably gone now but it's created another supply zone in fact it's hidden supply right there there's an outside candle so supply there is a supply zone right there so any pullbacks into that zone and then get short but again probably wait for more risk off before getting involved in that and gold gold um you know really being driven i think by um the fed um and what you know monetary policy is happening and as you see the uh federal reserve is still on track for tapering so that's had a bit of an effect on gold plus there was a you know we were kind of due a pullback anyway right so if the federal reserve um do start to taper which means they're going to potentially strengthen their their, their currency the us dollar then uh, you should see prices actually gold prices continue to go to the downside but you'd also need to see um, the data support the narrative so you need to see gdp right gdp um in 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 the us really start to grow um from that perspective and if it does then what you're going to see is again um gold probably look to sell off so the, the better the 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 uh the dollar does the worse for gold price um uh, regardless of inflation because of the fact that the federal reserve are going to be hiking interest rates which again is a return on the dollar so what tends to happen is 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 traders and investors will look for um look to hold the dollar because they're getting a return on investment um uh, and they're getting a yield whereas in gold gold doesn't pay a yield so um even though inflation is a way above the two percent target um, if the Federal Reserve are looking to high crates, then gold uh, should probably come to the downside and the dollar should continue to go higher. But if you are a gold bug and you want to get uh, long on this currency pair, currency pair, on this, uh, sorry, it's commodity. Um, and the reason why you would probably get long is because uh, GDP starts to, you know, drop off um, um, and inflation continues to go higher which is known as stagflation. If there are stagflation problems, then gold is gonna be a great buy, a really, really good buy um, at these levels. So let's see what happens, but um, keep an eye on the US dollar and uh, what happens with the Fed and the economy before looking to buy um, or sell uh, gold. Anyways, guys, I think that's it for this week. And it is, in fact, let me just pull that down. I think that's, there's a supply zone right there. Um, yeah so that's it uh guys that's it for this week uh again don't forget to like subscribe press that like button subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues and uh, until next week have a great trading week and take care